Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Double or triple your frame rates while improving sharpness and clarity. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we will go over the lossless scaling application that can be found in the Steam store. We'll first go over what the lossless scaling application is and how it can help us in Microsoft Flight Simulator or various other games or sims. We will then go over the download and installation, followed by the user interface and some of the settings in there. We will then download an ancillary application that we're going to run alongside of this called the Riva Statistics Tuner, and this will allow us to put an in-sim frame cap on our FPS. After that, we will dive into the NVIDIA control panel and go over the best settings for the lossless scaling application. We will then start up the sim, spawn in, and then I will go over some different scenarios to get the best settings for your system. Now there is just one caveat to this application and that it does not work for VR. In fact, if you try to use it with VR, I actually got worse performance. To answer another question, some of you may be asking, well, this is a Steam purchase. Do I have to have the Steam version of Microsoft Flight Sim? And I can tell you, no, you do not. I personally have the store version and this will work with either the store or the Steam version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, there is one more caveat once we spawn into the simulator, and that is the OBS software does not record more than one monitor at a time. So once I go over multi-monitor setup, I am going to have to switch over to my secondary camera that is pointing at the screen so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. The same goes with the on-screen FPS counter that the lossless scaling application will populate. That will also not be recorded with the OBS software, so I'll be able to show you that with my secondary camera. Now with all of that out of the way, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. All the links for today's video will also be down in the description. If you enjoyed today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's go over what lossless scaling is and how it can help us in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Lossless scaling allows you to scale windowed games to full screen using state-of-the-art scanning algorithms, as well as use ML-based proprietary scaling and frame generation. That's going to be the big one here, the frame generation portion, because frame generation with this application will work with pretty much any GPU. The latest feature allows you to use lossless scaling to generate additional frames in games that do not have such support, including emulators. Now I will say there is one caveat to this in that you need to have at least 25 FPS in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I found anything lower than that really degraded the performance that this application can provide. Lossless scaling is also useful for upscaling modern games if you cannot run them at native screen resolution and want to get rid of the blur due to bilinear scaling of the GPU driver, as well as for upscaling older and pixel art games which do not support modern screen resolutions or full screen mode. Now, the next part here is really important. For modern games, it is best to use the LS1, AMD, or the NVIDIA scaling option. I'll go over that once we dive into the user interface. All right, so now let's move into the download and installation of the lossless scaling application. But first, if you do not have Steam installed on your PC, we need to do that. To do that, you can hop right on the web. Links will be down below in the description. Once you're on the Steam website, you can install the Steam application right on your PC. Once you have the Steam application downloaded and installed, go ahead and open that up on your screen. At the very top, we're going to click on the store. Once we're there, you will see a search box at the very center top of your screen. Just start typing lossless scaling. Now, as you can see, lossless scaling does cost a couple dollars, 
But for right now, they are running a sale on this for $5.59 US. You can pick that up. We're going to go ahead and click on the lossless scaling application. And from this page, you can then add to cart and download on your PC. Once you have downloaded and installed the lossless scaling application, you should have an icon populate on your desktop such as this. Now keep in mind that any time that you run the lossless scaling application, because it is a Steam app, it will start the Steam program as well. If you close out Steam, it will most likely close and exit the lossless scaling application. All right, so now let's go over the user interface for the lossless scaling application. The version I'm using today is 2.9. The first thing that we want to do once you open the lossless scaling app is we're going to head up to the settings tab. In the settings menu, we can set up a couple different things here. Now, the first thing that I would recommend to set up is your scaling hotkey. Now, this is so that you can turn on and off the lossless scaling application without actually pressing the button on the user interface itself. I'll show you that here in a moment. Below that, you want to tick Start as Administrator, and the rest of the settings below are going to be your personal preference. Once we're done here, then we're going to go ahead and close out the Settings menu. So let's start at the left-hand side of the user interface. Under Scaling Mode, this will allow us to scale our image to a higher resolution. Now, to do this, we can either use Auto Mode, or you can switch into custom mode and set your own scaling factor. Personally, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I found that the custom mode didn't work all that well, but if it does for you, let me know what your settings are down below in the comments. So for scaling mode, I just leave this set to auto. Below this, we have another option to either choose full screen or aspect ratio. Now, I would always recommend full screen here, but let me explain what aspect ratio will do for us. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna use my OBS software to show you what's gonna happen. Now keep in mind that the OBS window is not the full screen. So what aspect ratio should do is maintain the current aspect ratio of the window once we activate the lossless scaling. So let's see if that works. All right, so as you can see here, what it has done is pretty much cut off the edges of the application and main, tried to maintain the aspect ratio of the window itself. Now, if I go ahead and switch this to full screen mode, bring my OBS software back up, now hopefully you can see now that it is actually taking up the full screen. Next over, we have scaling type. Now I went over this a little bit earlier, but for modern and 3D games, you want to make sure that you're either using AMD, NVIDIA, or the LS1 scaling method. Personally, I prefer the AMD FSR. Let me know what you use down below in the comments. Below this will allow us to choose a sharpening factor for the image. Again, this will all be personal preference, and I also noted that switching between the various scaling options, you will need to set different sharpness levels. If you're using the AMD FSR, I would also recommend to tick the optimized version here below. Moving on over to the right hand side of the screen, we have some frame generation options. If we tick on the drop down here, we have three options for frame generation. We can turn it off, use the frame generation 2.1, or the older version 1.1. Now I know most people are here for frame generation, so the version 2.1 is going to be the most up-to-date version and give the less bugs. Below frame generation, we have our mode type. If we tick on the drop-down, you will see we either have a two times or a three times frame generation. So that means it will either double or it can triple your frame rate. Now, don't get too excited here because there is a little caveat to this. Let me explain. I like to use a supercharger on an automobile as an example for this. Now, anyone knows that when you put a supercharger on a car, or heck, if you put a supercharger on an aircraft, you know that it will increase your horsepower exponentially. But a lot of people don't understand that it also takes some horsepower 
to spin the supercharger pulley and get that thing spinning up to pressurize the intake system. So in other words, you need to give up a little bit of horsepower to gain a lot of horsepower back in return. So the mode in frame generation will do something very similar. Now when you bump up to the times three, that is now gonna eat up a lot more performance to then try to give you three times the performance in return. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, let me know down below in the comments. But personally, I choose the X2 version. Seems to work fairly well for me. Now, if you are on a lower end PC, you can also option to tick on the performance mode, and this will help give a little bit more performance at the cost of a little quality. Below this, we have a couple cursor options. Now, when you're using frame generation, that will add some latency in your display. Now for Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's perfectly fine. If you're using a first person shooter game, well, now that's a little bit different story. Now, one thing to know about latency, when you increase your latency, that will also increase the time that your cursor is gonna be moving across the screen. So what I like to do is turn on adjust cursor speed. This way, when you're using the frame generation application, it will boost the speed of your cursor to about normal speed so you won't have a lag in your mouse. We're gonna head down to rendering, and in rendering, the only option that I have on here is draw FPS. I've tried some of these other options to no avail. Below that, we have our capture method. If you tick on the dropdown, we have three different options, one of which you're probably never gonna use, which is the GDI option. The DXGI and the WGC option will probably be what most people use. And we're gonna dive into this a little bit later once we get into the sim, because there's a reason why you may wanna use one over the other. Below this, we have GPU and display. I simply leave these on auto. Also note that when you switch between different capture methods, it will change some of the options here below. At the very bottom, we have some behavior and legacy options. We have multi-display mode, windowed mode, and variable refresh rate mode. Honestly, the legacy options you'll probably never use, but if you're someone that is using two or three monitors to display your simulator, then the multi-display mode is gonna be your friend. Lastly, if we take a look at the upper right-hand corner of our screen, we have two more options. We have the manual and we have the scaling button. Under the manual, will give us some information about the application itself, so it might be a good read for those of you who are not familiar with this application. The scaling button is the optional way in which we can start the scaling program. Once you click on the scaling button, this will then give you five seconds to refocus your mouse pointer. Now what I mean by that is, you need to then click on the display that's showing the simulator, or any game for that matter. If you don't, then it's going to scale whatever the mouse pointer was clicked on last. The next application that we need to go over is the Riva Tuner Statistics Server. What this application will allow us to do is to limit our frame rate in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, I could just use VSync and limit my frame rate that way. Well, let me explain why using your VSync to limit your frame rate may not be a good idea. Now, like I explained earlier, that when you're using frame generation, you will induce latency. So you're gonna add latency to your system. Now, what VSync will do, even though it can cap your frame rate for you, it also adds latency into the system. So you're almost doubling your latency once you start VSync and you start using the scaling application. Links for this webpage will be down below in the description, check it out. Once you're here, go down to the download and download version 7.3.6 or whatever the latest download version is. And I would recommend using a stable version, not a beta version, if they do give you an option. Now, for those of you who may have downloaded MSI Afterburner, the Riva Tuner Statistics Server is also included in the MSI Afterburner software. You can also download that here by clicking on the Download Here link. 
and that will take you to the MSI Afterburner download if you wish to set a custom fan curve for your GPU or overclock or undervolt your GPU. I've done a video on overclocking I will post down below if you're interested. In any case, once you have the Riva Tuner Statistics server downloaded, then we're through with this page. You want to go ahead and install that on your system. All right, so now let's take a look at the interface for the Riva Tuner server. Now, before we get into this, I know some people might say, well, wait a minute. If I don't want to use VSync, I could just limit my frame rate in the NVIDIA control panel also. Well, yes, you can, but I find that the Riva Tuner actually has the least performance impact on your system. So now let's take a look at some of the functions of the Riva Tuner Statistics server. Let's go all the way to the bottom of the application, and we have a couple buttons here. On the right hand side, we can hit the setup, and this will allow us to fine tune this application for your specific needs. And now personally, I haven't changed anything in here, so be careful what you do change. It may hurt you, and then again, it may not. If we move over to the left a little bit, we have an add button. The add button will allow us to add specific games or applications into the profile so we can set up various profiles for various games or simulators. Now, for me, I just leave it on the global profile and I only open the Riva Tuner when Microsoft Flight Simulator is running. And then, as soon as you open it when the simulator is running, it will just apply whatever you have on the user interface to the game or simulator. So now let's move up to the very top. Start with Windows, I ticked off. Below this, we can show an on-screen display. We can either turn that on or off. Application detection level, I leave that set on low. Stealth mode is on. Below that, we can set our frame rate limit right here. I will do that later on. Below, we have on-screen display support. We can either turn that on or off. Personally, I leave this off. Now the reason for that is, whenever you're using the lossless scaling application, any overlay that you have on top of your screen may affect the performance that you're getting while using the lossless scaling application. Now this may also go for any NVIDIA filters, any FPS counters, anything that you may overlay on top of the image could potentially give performance issues. If you are someone who is using the lossless scaling application and are using NVIDIA filters, let me know down below in the comments if you do or do not have an issue using them, as I don't use any filters, so I really can't say for sure. So once we're done with that, that pretty much sets up the Riva Tuner Statistics server for use in Microsoft Flight Sim. Okay, so now let's dive into the NVIDIA control panel settings that are gonna be best for the lossless scaling application. Now, the first thing that I would recommend to do is to go in and switch your monitor to the native refresh rate of your monitor. To do that, all you need to do is to click off of your native resolution and then re-click on the resolution and you will see the refresh rate went to our native refresh rate. Then make sure that you hit apply. Now, keep in mind that we may come back into the NVIDIA control panel and change around our refresh rate, that's all gonna depend on the capture method that we're using in the lossless scaling application. Then we're gonna head over to the Manage 3D settings. Once we're here, we're gonna head over to Program Settings, and then you're gonna go down and click the Add button. Now it's gonna be important that you've run the lossless scaling application so that when you click on add, it will show all the most recently used applications. So all you need to do is find the lossless scaling application, hit add selected program, and then it will populate here into our program menu. Now that we have that done, scroll all the way down and there's a couple settings here that we need to change. The Vulkan OpenGL present method, you wanna make sure that you have prefer layered on DXGI swap chain, the vertical sync menu, you wanna make sure that you're using the fast option in vSync. Now remember I told you before that if you use vertical sync in the simulator, that it will induce latency. Now the reason why we're using the vertical sync in the lossless scaling application specifically 
is because when you're using the lossless scaling application, this will reduce or eliminate any screen tearing that you may be experiencing. But using the fast method is going to be important here because if we take a look down at the bottom, if you're using the fast vSync option, that means the GPU renders unconstrained similar to vSync off, but does not tear since frames in excess of the refresh rate of the monitor are dropped, delivers latency that is very close to vSync off with no tearing. Now the only other option that I change in here is under power management mode and you want to select prefer maximum performance. Once you're done with any changes, go down, hit apply, OK, and we are all set to go. If you want to know my NVIDIA control panel settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I will also post a link down below for that video or you can click up here. All right, so now that we're spawned into the sim, before we start the lossless scaling application, I need to go over one little caveat. And that is you never want your frame rate, your frame generation frame rate, to exceed your monitor's native or the refresh rate that you have set in the NVIDIA control panel. If you exceed your monitor's refresh rate, then you will induce stuttering, tearing, and it's just not going to be a good day for you. And that's why it's important that we cap our in-sim FPS to half of whatever our refresh rate for the monitor is. To start off in the scaling application, we're going to turn the scaling type to off, and we're going to be mainly focusing on the frame generation for this portion. We're also going to be focusing on the times two mode in the frame generation section, because I feel that the three times frame generation just eats up a little bit too much performance. And if we scroll down on the frame generation side, we're going to use the DXGI capture method. Now what's the difference between DXGI and WGC? But for now, I'm going to stick with DXGI and I'm going to show you how I set it up for this. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I start the scaling application is I need to limit my frame rate. Make sure that in the sim, you do not have your VSync on. You have that turned off. And then you want to open up the Riva Tuner Statistics Server. And under frame rate, you're going to input half of your monitor's refresh rate. But we're going to take this one step further. Because remember I said if you do exceed your monitor's refresh rate, it will induce stutters, and sometimes when you cap your FPS at half, it still may exceed your refresh rate that you have set for the monitor. So I always set it for one FPS lower, and that will make sure that I do not exceed the refresh rate for my monitor. So now what I'm going to do is activate the lossless scaling, and hopefully you should see the FPS counter in the top left hand corner of my screen. And as you'll see there, we're getting 70 FPS, and it's interpolating that to 140 FPS. Now, unfortunately, because I'm only able to capture my screen in 60 Hertz, same thing with the auxiliary camera I'm using, you're not able to see just how smooth this is on my screen. Okay, so now let's go over a different scenario, and let's say that you only have a 60 Hertz refresh rate monitor. As I know a lot of people are using TVs to display their Microsoft Flight Simulator, so let's show you what settings are going to be good for that. We're going to come into the NVIDIA control panel, and I'm going to make sure that my refresh rate is set on 60 Hz. So the highest refresh rate, the highest FPS that I can get now, is 60 FPS on my monitor. That's going to be important. If we hop back into the simulator, you will see that my native FPS in the simulator is almost 70 FPS, but my display is only able to register 60 FPS. So if I go ahead and try to turn around in the cockpit, I'm not sure how much of this is going to show up, but it is very jittery and stuttery. Well, that's because we did not cap our frame rate, and I did that purposely so you could see what would happen. So we're going to turn off the scaling, we're going to come into our frame rate, and we're going to turn this to 30 FPS. 
Now you'll see on the NSIM FPS counter, we are now set at 30, and let's go ahead and activate lossless scaling. In the upper left hand corner, you will see that we are at 30 FPS, and it's interpolating to 59 to 60. Now if I turn around in the cockpit, it is much, much smoother. Now again, if you are still having a little bit of stutteriness inside the cockpit, go in your frame rate and turn it down to 29. What that'll do is that will prohibit the frame gen from accidentally generating one or two more frames than your monitor's refresh rate. All right, so now that we went over the 60 hertz option, let me run over another scenario with you. So we're gonna switch back to 144 hertz refresh rate. In the Riva tuner, we're gonna set this to 71 FPS. And then in the sim, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the scaling tool. As you'll see in the top left, we're getting about 69 to 70 FPS, interpolating that to 139. Now, if I turn around in the cockpit, that yeah, looks pretty good. It's pretty smooth, feels pretty good. But we can get this even smoother. Now, the object here is to get the interpolated FPS value to equal that of your monitor's refresh rate. And when you do, you will get the smoothest performance possible. For those of you who are running on a 60 hertz monitor, it's very easy to achieve your interpolated FPS to equal that of your refresh rate of the monitor. But for those of you who have monitors of 120, 144, then what we can do is to play with our refresh rate a little bit. Because we're getting 70 FPS in the sim, I know that if I switch to 120, that I can cap my in-sim FPS to 59, and I'll be right at 120 frames. In the Riva tuner, we're gonna set that to 59 FPS. And as you'll see in the in-sim FPS tool, it has adjusted accordingly. Now, if I turn on my lossless scaling application, you will see that we are getting just about 120 FPS now, and the image quality is, uh, it's probably 10 times smoother now when I'm turning around in the cockpit with no tearing, no jitteriness, and no stutters. Here's the caveat to this. Don't get hung up on trying to make sure that you're exactly your monitor's refresh rate. If your FPS drops a little bit because you go into a highly populated area, that's okay your interpolated value will drop a little bit, but it's still gonna be pretty close and your screen image is most likely not gonna change very much and it's still gonna be buttery smooth. All right, so now that we have gone over a couple of scenarios using DXGI, which is more forgiving than the other capture method we're gonna go over, now let's go over WGC with the DXGI. If you fall short on your capped frame rate, it doesn't really matter. It will automatically interpolate that lower frame rate for you and smooth out the image. With WGC, we need to make sure that we set our capped frame rate to a frame rate that we can always achieve. You never wanna fall below your capped frame rate when you're using WGC. So you wanna test this in some highly populated areas so that you can choose a frame rate that's gonna best suit you. Now, if you're using a 60 FPS monitor, then you wanna make sure that you set your frame rate to 60 Hertz in your NVIDIA control panel. And then you wanna make sure that you dial in your frame rate limiter to, I would say, 29. Now, again, if you're gonna fall below that 29 FPS and drop down to 25, then you probably do not want to use the WGC capture method. Go with DXGI, you'll probably have better results. When you're using this capture method, always remember that you want to make sure that your overall frame rate is going to match the refresh rate that you choose over here on the left hand side. So for instance, let's say you can get on average 40 FPS on your system. Well, we do not have an option for 80 hertz on our monitor. 
So we need to drop back one to the next lowest frame rate or refresh rate that we have available, and that would be 60. Again, it's very important that you're going to achieve the set refresh rate. Now, if you can achieve an easy 60 FPS all the time, then sure, go ahead and choose 120 in the NVIDIA control panel, and then in your frame rate limiter, then we can set this to 59 or 60, and then that will be perfect. But keep in mind that if you drop below 59 FPS, you will get stutters, you may get some tearing. All right, so now that I've gone over how to use the WGC capture method, now let me show you how to implement that in the sim. The first thing we wanna do is to check our frame rate that we're receiving. Right now, I'm at 73 FPS. Now again, you wanna check this in a highly populated area like JFK, and you wanna go with whatever you get there. But for the sake of demonstration, I will go with what we're receiving right now. If we take a look at our refresh rates that we have available on my system, 144, 120, and 60. At 73 FPS, if I double that, I can hit 144 easily. The problem is when we turn on the lossless scaling application, it is going to eat up a couple FPS. So I'm probably going to wind up dropping below 72 FPS is what I need to maintain consistently using WGC. For that reason, I'm going to choose 120 Hertz. I'm just going to drop it back one. The next thing I want to do is to go to my frame rate limiter and we're going to limit the frame rate to 59 FPS and then hit enter. Now I do want to show everyone a little issue that I've been running into when trying to use the WGC capture method. And it's been hit or miss when it works and when it doesn't work. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go inside of the cockpit here, you can take note of the frame rate that we're getting is 240 FPS. Now that is not double my 60 FPS that I've got my cap set to. So there's obvious a problem either in the frame rate that it's showing us here, whether either it's wrong or there's some glitch going on in the program itself and causing an issue here. So same thing, if I go into my NVIDIA control panel, let's turn it to 60 Hertz. And in the Riva tuner, we're gonna turn that on 30 FPS, well, 29. Now, when we spawn back in here, we should see our FPS at 60, but it's not. It's 120, which is double the refresh rate in the NVIDIA control panel. So it really doesn't make any sense of why this is doing this. And again, sometimes I've got it to work and then other times it just does not work for me for some reason. All right, so the next thing I wanna go over is how to set up all of your monitors for a multi-monitor setup. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna switch my refresh rate back to 144, which is my monitor's native refresh. And then over in the Riva tuner, we're gonna set this to 71 or 72 FPS. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna change the capture method back to DXGI because that one seems to work the best. The next thing that we need to do for a multi-monitor setup is to add new render windows here below. If you have multiple monitors, you already know how to do this. So I'm not gonna go into a full demonstration on how to do that but I've already kind of set everything up to extend to my secondary monitor, which you should be able to see in the camera now. All right, so as you can see, both the monitors are working properly. It did drop my FPS about almost 20 FPS by adding that secondary monitor. So now what we're gonna do is to activate lossless scaling. But before we do that, we need to go into the lossless scaling application and we're gonna turn on multi-display mode. All right, so now when we turn on the lossless scaling application, you can see our frame rate is 52 FPS and it's interpolating that to 104 FPS.
Now, when you're using a multi-monitor setup, it's always a good idea to make sure that all of your monitors can achieve the exact same refresh rate. And that's one thing that I do not have. My secondary monitor only goes to 60 Hertz while I'm using 144 on my main monitor. So because we're achieving 104 interpolation on the FPS, we are exceeding the 60 Hertz refresh rate on our secondary monitor. And that means it is not going to be as smooth as what you see on the first monitor. A lot of people were having issues with their mouse pointer when you're using multi-monitor. And when you have that option ticked, I hope you can see this in the video on the secondary camera, but my mouse works perfectly fine when switching to the alternate monitor. No issues there. So on my in-sim graphic settings, I make sure that VSync is off, and I also have the NVIDIA low latency mode turned off as well. All right, so the very last thing that I wanna go over is the scaling type if you wish to use the scaling mode. Again, you wanna make sure that you're using either AMD, NVIDIA, or LS1. I prefer the AMD FSR, and I have my sharpness set on six. Optimization version is on. Now let's see if we can notice the difference in clarity. So the loss of scaling is off. We're gonna turn it on. Turn it back off, back on. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell the difference. And again, you can adjust that to your liking by just adjusting the sharpness slider here. And I keep everything over here set on auto and full screen. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comment section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.